back. So I just want to, before we continue, talk a bit about regions, um, comments, and shortcuts, very briefly. So first of all, let's talk about um, comments. You can do comments like this, double front slash, and then you can start writing something, right? The cool thing is the compiler won't touch this now, so it's not code, it's actually a comment. I mean, you can write anything in here that you want to maybe remember for later, you want a colleague to read when he comes and watches your code later on. Comments is a great thing. We can do it in a different way. We can also do something like this, front slash star, and then end a comment with a front a star front slash like this. Now this is actually a multi-line comment, so I can just keep going here, and I can write multiple lines of information here, instead of having to rewrite double front slash like I've done right here. Okay, so I would say that this code I made right here should actually just be put inside a multi-line comment like this, and then I'll just remove all the information that I just added. Now I don't need these continuous front slashes down here. Now that's the multi-line comment like this, and that's also a way to write comments. Now the final way to write comments is actually adding a summary, and the way we can do that is pretty much just making three front slashes. So let me try and show you down here in this main method. If I do one, two, three, automatically a summary pops up, and actually .NET already put in some information for you in this summary. You can change this somewhere in the setting if you want to, but they say, okay, so this is probably the entry point of the program, right? So they actually explain, this is the command line arguments that we're sending in, but you can put any information in here, right? So I could write, uh, welcome, whoops, I am last, blah, blah, blah. You can do whatever you want here, but, but the idea is pretty much that a summary can give you more details about a function, for instance, or method, or whatever you want to put in there. So let's just keep that here for now and undo what I just did, because I want instead to have the command line arguments. Now, also you can do it down here and you can add it with a function. Let me just find a function that's kind of fun here, that we have one, that both has a parameter that is sent in and it also have a return statement. So if I do the three front slash here, you'll notice that we get a summary, then we get a return statement. We can start explaining what this is that we're returning. Um, menu choice, for instance, that's what we're getting back as int, right? We can also start writing what we're sending in list of menu items, blah, 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 if you want to. So that's kind of how you can use comments. So the last thing I want to kind of give you guys is regions. Now regions is a pretty amazing thing. You'll notice right here I added a region so I can actually collapse different areas of my code. So let's just try and collapse that guy, collapse that guy, and collapse this guy. So now I have three different regions here, but notice how easy my code is just to, to get the overview right. So next lesson we're going to start moving these classes into a new class or methods into a new class so we can start getting rid of the static. And if I just open this, I can see all the different methods now. And that's actually pretty amazing with my region. So I can start um, uh, hiding stuff. For instance, to make a region, what you'll do is make a, t a hashtag like this. You'll write region and then you'll just tap once and you'll give the region a name, repository area. That could be the name. And then you'll pretty much just at the end tag that you're getting below where you kind of want to end this, right? So in this case, I have repository area here and I can hide it now as one chunk. That's pretty amazing again. Look at how easy the code will be to read. And I could actually add a comment above a region if I just want to give more information about that specific region. So this is also something you can use or not use. That's really up to you. The final thing is just going to be a short introduction to how you can work with your shortcuts. Now, there is actually for the Visual Studio on Windows, there is a shortcut theme or a list right here, the complete list. I will put the link in the description and you can go and pick 2017 and you'll get a list of all the shortcuts. Now, that is the default set. It might change and it will definitely change if you do what I did on the Mac and that is you can go in on the Mac and also on Windows, select preferences, you can search for shortcut keys, find key bindings, and then you can pick another C sheem, sheem right here, sheem, uh, sheem, eh? right here. You can pick Visual Studio, Reshab, or blah, 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 blah. So you can pick any one you want. I've picked Visual Studio Mixed on the Mac. And as you scroll down here, you can actually start changing each and every key binding you want, if you want to kind of change things around. So that was it for shortcut keys. One of them that I'm using all the time is if I write repo and this helper doesn't pop up, you can write command dot or control dot and it'll actually pop up and say, don't you want to do this? And I'll say, yes, I want to do that, right? So it can help me out. That is kind of the quick fix. You might also see a quick fix icon over here instead on the Windows machine and also on the Mac, just use that instead if you want to, but that's the shortcut for it. 
There's a lot of other great shortcuts. We can get back to those later. One very important one is actually, let me just show you that one. If you write if, and you see this icon right here with the dots inside, and you double tap, 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 you'll actually have an autocomplete statement. I'll start using that soon. So that's it for this lesson. Have fun. See you next time.